Today I'm looking at the very unique Ricoh GR2. The Ricoh GR2 is designed to be a camera that you could carry around with you almost everywhere. And to ensure this portability, Ricoh's designers have been able to pare the camera down to an amazing 220 grams while keeping it to a footprint smaller than my iPhone 8. It is of course quite a bit thicker than my iPhone, and by now you're probably wondering why anyone would carry around a camera bulkier than your phone when your phone already takes really good pictures. This this is where the Ricoh packs its second surprise. The GR2 is built around an APS-C size sensor, like the sensor on most entry-level DSLRs, and that sensor is more than twice the size of the sensor on any smartphone. The general rule of thumb being, a larger sensor equals better image quality. Now the retractable lens on the Ricoh GR2 is fixed with a 35mm equivalent focal length of 28mm, so it's pretty wide. Since this is a fixed lens, you're going to need to get get closer to the subject to zoom in. Now this isn't such a bad thing because it allows you to pay more attention to focus and exposure instead of zoom. The lens also has a minimum focusing distance of a little under 4 inches, so it should technically be good for macro photography. We'll test that out in a minute. The Ricoh GR2 has a very sturdy magnesium body with a decent rubberized grip on the front. While this grip isn't very deep, the camera is light enough to use comfortably with one hand, which is really important for things like street photography. Photography. There aren't a whole lot of buttons on the camera, but everything has been placed very thoughtfully. The top has an on-off button, which lights up when the camera is on, a shutter button, an adjuster dial, and a really nice locking mode dial. There's also a hot shoe on top, though I doubt anyone will ever use it, and a pop-up flash which can be very helpful in low light. More about the low light performance in a minute. The controls on the back are also fairly straightforward. The one I really like is the plus or minus toggle, which allows you to quickly adjust exposure compensation on the go. This is really useful for street photography. The 3 inch display on the back is pretty bright, sharp and vivid, and performs well even outdoors. However, it doesn't flip or even articulate, so don't expect this to take selfies or shoot vlogs. The SD card pops into a slot on the bottom along with the battery. Ricoh doesn't provide a standalone charger, so the battery can only be charged with the battery inside the camera using the provided charging cable. That is, of course, unless you invest in a standalone battery charger. I'll leave a link to one below in case you plan to buy one. There is also a tripod mount on the bottom, though again, I doubt most people will use this. Another thing people are unlikely to use is the micro HDMI port on the side. It does also come with this really useful lanyard. I do however recommend investing in a compact case. I'll leave a link to one I recommend below. The Ricoh GR2 can shoot images as large as 16 megapixels and stores them either in the JPEG format or as a raw image or both. And as you can see from these shots that were taken taken with the camera in the automatic mode, the pictures it takes are really sharp, well exposed, and the colors are very natural. Thanks to its large APS-C size sensor, the GR2's images also have a nice shallow depth of field. The only thing that really hobbles this camera is its focus system. The focus system seems almost four to five years behind anything from Sony, Canon, Nikon, or Panasonic. It locks focus reasonably well, but there is a clear contrast between a subject and its surroundings. Like if you use it for street photography, portraiture, or taking pictures of people in general. However, it really struggles when it comes to taking pictures of complex subjects, such as plants and flowers and struggles even more with macro shots, despite the low minimum focusing distance of its lens. I have to say, in all these years of testing cameras, the GR2's focusing system really has to be the worst that I've ever seen. It's just plain slow, sloppy, and often hunts even after locking focus. It's really embarrassing for a camera in 2018, and I think Ricoh can do much better. When it comes to video, the GR2 can shoot 1080p video at 24, 30 and 25 fps. All my test footage was shot in the 24 fps mode. The footage is decent and usable. Again, if you're fine shooting where there's a good contrast between the subject and the background. Otherwise, locking focus on what you want is almost impossible. The Ricoh GR2 does technically come equipped with Wi-Fi and can technically connect to your smartphone or tablet. However, the most annoying thing is that you have to buy the GR2 remote app for the 
camera. I honestly wasn't willing to shell out the $10 to do this. This is 2018 and camera apps aren't an add-on. They're one of the reasons people buy certain cameras. So it's really stupid of Ricoh to expect people to pay for the app. So should you get the Ricoh GR2? Well, that all really depends on what you plan to shoot. If you absolutely need a really compact camera to explore street photography or a camera to take portraits or even as a camera to take photos of your family, the Ricoh GR2 could be a decent option. However, even for this application, I don't recommend paying anywhere close to full price. If you can get it at a substantial discount, it might not be a bad option. If you can't get it at a discount, there really are plenty of cameras with better focus systems, like the Canon EOS M100, the Sony A5100, or the Panasonic GX850. All these cameras are pretty inexpensive, have large sensors, and are also really compact, especially if you equip them with prime lenses. I'll leave links to all these cameras right below the video in case you're looking to buy one. Hope this review was useful. If it was, please hit that like button and subscribe for more reviews, unboxings, and how-to videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.